All right, I guess we're getting started. Hey, everybody at CMS. In the control room. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I'm Sonia. Everything is everything is okay. We are in P5. Mm -hmm. So we are close to Geneva, but in France. So <laughs> this is quite a mystery if you stay here. But however, uh do we have already our guests there? Or uh, because I see panelists. Yep, so we have a bunch of kids, high schoolers. I guess they're not kids as much so more. <laughs> I a don't know if they like to be called the kids. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of high schoolers <laughs> are uh, from all over the Chicagoland area. They're in our Saturday morning physics program, which is when a bunch of students get together and decide that they want to be taught modern physics. Okay. Um, and this is, this is a rare treat for them to get a tour of an operating or a current, uh, uh, an operating experiment that's currently just on break. Um, we so try to inspire them, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> and uh, I'm really happy to see, okay, I see the area. I was uh, many times in the Fermilab and also in Chicago. So it's also a pleasure for me to stay here and to, to connect with you. So I say hi to all uh, our students and uh, okay, they will be my, let's say, uh, my preferred people today, I should say. So my name is Sonia Natale. Uh, I started as a particle physicist, uh, working on uh, accelerator physics. I'm coming from Italy, from Rome. And now, okay, it's uh, a little bit, I mean, at CERN, um, more than 20 years, a little bit more. And uh, I came here as a diploma student, okay? So for my bachelor, master, and uh, just to stay two months in doubt. This is just to give a message also to our students so that, okay, maybe you don't think to go in a place or you think to stay only a few months or uh, really a short time and then, uh, Okay, life decides for you. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I never went back to Italy. And now I'm welcoming you to from uh, CMS, uh, where we we'll have the chance to visit, uh, um, to go underground uh, and uh, to visit uh, all the, the, the facilities we have here. Because uh, I guess that they had a lecture, so at least um, the picture of so the, the zone. But however, this. yes, we have here. Uh, so Zoltan is helping me. So you see, you see this uh, big ring we have. This is just the last step of accelerator chain. Maybe you can see the smallest ring. Yes, uh, indicating by the mouse uh, right now. So basically, we start from uh, uh, our site uh, in Geneva, uh, in Meren, which is uh, this small triangle indicated by the mouse. And then from there, we inject our particles and we start the journey of those particles, so protons in, uh, in our case, uh, case, just to reach the largest ring. The largest ring length is uh, 27 kilometers. Uh, so just uh, try to figure out a distance of 27 kilometers because it's it's uh, it's a lot it's a lot and if you think that the lhc which is our our accelerator is made of about uh, 9000 pieces this should give you the feeling of how long it is where is installed this uh, this accelerator is underground uh, yes from this picture you can see you see the ring underground how much in average, uh, minus 100 meters, okay? Uh, you can see also from this picture, another ring in uh, its, its SPS, yes, which is a little bit higher uh, from, uh, and this is the previous step of the accelerator chain. This, I think this yes, is so this is good. also nice. We don't have the levels, let's say, the different uh, levels, but you can see the picture. So maybe we can follow just uh, for a while the journey of the particles. So we start from, okay, it's written linear two, but this is not exactly. <laughs> now we have the, up to now. Yes, up to <laughs> now, let's say it was linear two, but this year, let's say from the next run, which will start the next year around, we say May, we will close even before, we will have another 
another linear accelerator because a LINAC stays for linear accelerator, which is LINAC 4, which is an upgrade, let's say not the same, but is, uh, is much better than a LINAC 2 to inject particles. And then you see, we, we start this journey of particles from the LINAC, then we go to the first ring, which is the booster. And then we go to the PS. The PS, I would like to stress, this ring was built in 1959. And uh, this, uh, this 1959 is still working, OK? So we really need this, uh, this ring. Maybe not the same nuts and bolts. Yes, OK, <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes in news, we will see. And then, OK, we, have, we, have, we go to the SPS. You saw already on the, uh, the, first, uh, the previous slide. And the, we end up to the LHC. The LHC is not only an accelerator, it is also a collider. What I mean when I say collider, this means that you should have at least two beams inside running in the opposite directions. And we installed the four, uh, let's say, we can call cameras, but okay, the, the, the real name is detectors, uh, which allows us to see what happens when you crash these two beams. Uh, so we crash, uh, we have this bunch crossing, we call this, we crash the beams inside the center of these four detectors. And in particular, we are now, we will visit the CMS detector, the compact neon solenoid, which is the one um, on the top uh, uh, right side of the, of, the, of the slide. I see that I have uh, now yes. my color here, Okay, do you want to introduce yourself? Because I said just a few words about me. Uh, okay, maybe I, I just close my, my thing because I started because I think physics is much more important than me. But whatever, just to say, so coming from Italy, I arrived here as a, 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 a master student, uh, supposed to go back to Italy, never went back to Italy. And then I started my career here. I, I obtained my PhD at University of Geneva. But at, the, at that moment, it was on another project, which is a, a particle physics detector installed on the space station, the International Space Station. So at that moment, I became an astroparticle physicist. But however, it's always particle physics. That's it. OK, please. <laughs> Uh, what I would propose, uh, Sonia, yes. that, that you go around in the control. So room. what I, I leave the floor to my colleague and I go underground. We will see underground. Uh, you will see through my eyes the what we uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, just a quick introduction. I know I met, I think uh, I see some familiar faces. I've seen, I've met some of you guys before. Uh, but if I haven't met you, my name is Andres, and clearly I don't know how daylight savings works. Sorry that I was late. Oh I was I was so convinced that it was 6 p.m., but yes, time zones. Um, so yeah, I'm a physicist with CMS. I've been, yeah, uh, I guess something like uh, a decade is uh, around that amount that I've been involved with the experiments, and I'm based here at CERN, originally from Puerto Rico. And yeah, I, I saw that Sonia already gave you, uh, uh, well, started to give you an introduction and she just started to talk about CMS. So I'm um, hoping that we can mainly talk about CMS and you'll get to see CMS in almost its final configuration. Uh, so I apologize if some of the information was already said. Don't worry, but, don't worry. Uh, so just to give you some context, we are, at the end of what we call the second long shutdown. And this is a period of uh, upgrades and maintenance for not just our detector, but also the LHC itself. And there's many, many things, uh, many activities. This was a, a three, uh, nearly three year long break. And we'll talk a bit about all the activities and all the work that had been going on. But uh, I'll just point out what you can see here from Sonia's camera. So uh, she's just directly behind us, but this is sort of the other side of the main control room here at CMS. And you could almost, actually the view is very nice today. You could almost see out the window, the Jura Mountains, which are very, very pretty. But today. now we have sunset here. So. Yeah, so we're about to see, yeah, the sun is just setting. And you can see the Jura Mountains off in the, in the distance. So it, you know, if you're not familiar with 
the Geneva area, we are about 20, maybe 25 minutes from downtown Geneva. So uh, something that Sonia probably mentioned is that Bellitzi Tunnel crosses the Swiss-French border. And uh, we are right now at 0.5, which is uh, exactly- Just to recall, let me put back the, that slide we started with. Yes. Just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, we are directly opposite of Atlas and Atlas is already in, it's in Meran, which we could maybe call the suburbs of Geneva. <laughs> uh, so, you know, CMS is really in the middle of nowhere, uh, but it's very that's, nice. That's and, very Andres, nice. Yes. Just a, just a check, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very yeah. well. We can hear yeah, you. Yeah, okay, so. Because, okay, I'm trying to set up um, uh, the, the audio so you can hear me. We can yeah. hear you. We can hear you all the way, okay. in, uh, all the, way in the U.S. Yeah. We got a question. Okay. Uh, we got a question? Yes. yes. Uh, the Q&A. Yeah. Zoltar, do you want to read it? Yes, why not? How much time does it take for a particle, a particle collision event to occur mm -hmm. from start to collision? Uh, well, if we consider the start as a start from the Linux, right, then so this it has is, a certain sequence. Yeah, so if we're talking about what we would call a, a fill, uh, this is the process of um, accelerating the protons from scratch, let's say. Uh, and this, as, as Sultan said, happens starting in the Linux. And Sonia, I, I saw that she explained sort of this injection chain where we add more energy to the particles. So I would say uh, under normal LHC conditions, this could be, a, you know, a very quickly, it could be an hour. But yeah, it, I think it's it's an order of an hour. Yeah, on the order on of an hour. Things, usually it is something like between 40 minutes. And so Andres? Yes, Sonia? Can you yes, hear Sonia, me? Go ahead. We can hear you, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, no, because I, I didn't want to interrupt you. So maybe I can describe as I enter and then when we lose the, the connection, you can continue in your description. So, Perfect. okay, just to tell you, okay, ne Noemi is helping me. So I will go in front of the, of the camera here. Yeah, you see? So I, I have to wear, first of all, uh, for safety, uh, an helmet, and I have also, I don't know if I can show you, okay? <laughs> Particular shoes. Uh, uh, to enter in and then I will badge in this uh, point uh, to be recognized with my dosimeter and I can enter, I can enter these uh, gray green doors. Now we have different kind of green doors. Maybe I will leave then uh, Zoltan and Andres uh, to explain the colors of the doors uh, as I mean. Uh, but however, maybe you can remind, uh, I, I would like to remind you that these doors are are sometimes famous uh, outside CERN because uh, there was some scene uh, in uh, one of uh, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood movies, uh, Angel and Demons. So uh, I hope the, the, nothing will happen to me as in the movie. So I will enter. Consider that uh, we, I have to do, there will be some checks I had to pass uh, through. One is a weight check on the floor. You can see Noam is showing you. This is uh, how to say to to verify that I'm a person and uh, entering because this is a door only for people. And then there are also I cannot show you, but you can imagine some infrared beams uh, checking that I I'm not entering with any material, in particular a back, backpack or something. And then I have the last thing, the last check is the biometrical check, which is done with this. Uh, uh, with this machine, uh, you can see now on the on the on the screen, and so this is because uh, I will be recognized because I'm in the database of CERN. So let's try to see if the system will allow me to enter. You can uh, just tell me good luck. I will try. If the door closes as it is, I mean now I'm checking my. Is biometric check. It's okay. And I mean, now there will be uh, Noemi doing the same. Okay, you will, uh, you cannot, uh, you will be not able to follow her, 
just because she has to put the camera in a different way, as you see the beep, beep, maybe you, you can hear the beep, beep. Maybe this I can, because of... yeah, I, ju I can yeah. just quickly add that it's, uh, you know, Sonia made it look very easy, but it's ac actually often tricky to get through these doors in particular because of the infrared beams or infrared lasers that are doing yeah, many it's checks. Exactly the camera, it's the, exactly the camera and the infrared checker was failing failed before but now it's okay and now also noem is in so we enter the experimental area we are not underground we are on surface but i can show you something okay we have another check with green doors here in this other side so this is another uh, point we can enter uh, and here we have also something more which is this blue door, Noemi, she is, show, uh, is showing you. And this blue door you see here is for material and also for visitors, sorry. In the sense that, of course, visitors, they are not uh, uh, recorded in their database at CERN. And this means that if we, we want them to enter, we have to use uh, the door uh, used for material. So they enter here and they go, we can take the elevator, I have already asked the call the elevator, and you can see now. Okay, Noem is showing you the the the, uh, the deepness. Yes, okay, it's coming up. Okay, it's a third minus thirty meters. So we will wait a little bit the elevator to come. I will go in, and at a certain point, I will lost for a while the connection. I will call you back uh, as uh, I will uh, hear you again. So just let me enter. And in this moment, I will leave the floor to Andres and Sultan. So I mean, you see, this elevator fits up to at least 30 people, but now we can only, we can only uh, fit five people. And then, okay, we go, we go to minus uh, two. Yeah. Okay, we go to minus two, I press minus two, we have a different levels here, minus one, minus one, minus two, and minus three. I don't know what, ah, okay, yes. Um, which is exactly, let's say, roughly minus 100, minus nine, uh, sorry, minus 100, minus 90, and minus 80 meters, okay? Now we will go, you can follow, and I will uh, come back as the line will be back, okay? Great. So maybe Andres, I can to take you. over and uh, I, I can just say a word perhaps about why all these facilities are underground and in particular just many interesting things about CMS and uh, the construction of CMS. So the, one of the main reasons why we need to build all these facilities underground is that our detector is very, very heavy. So in order to uh, build a detector that's twice as heavy as the Eiffel Tower, we need to build on top of the bedrock. And the bedrock happens to be around 100 meters deep uh, here in 0.5. But it's interesting to know that that, uh, or that depth of the LHC is not constant. So there's deeper points and there are points that are more shallow. And uh, in particular, CMS, it was, uh, CMS was constructed uh, after the LEP experiment. So this is a relatively new facility um, and it was very challenging to build the facility here because there was running water and it had to be frozen in order to dig a shaft. And there's many, many interesting facts about that, but I can pass it yes, on. Yes, exactly. Okay, can you hear me now, Andres? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, okay, yes, in, in fact, it was rather interesting, but okay, you know, I was always telling this and then I discovered that uh, I was, uh, I met an engineer telling me that when you built the tunnels on the motorways, uh, mostly you, you experience the same. So I said, but you cannot find a Roman villa, okay, when you are doing your works. Because here, when they were digging, they, they found also a Roman villa. And so I don't know what they did, frankly, if they removed all things or stuff, etc. However, we- No, the I, Roman villa is intact. The Roman villa is intact. It yeah, was excavated but, and, and buried back. Yeah, I know where it is. It's just outside of the control room. Uh, outside the fences. Uh, I didn't know obviously, that. we do not destroy anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that's very interesting, but I didn't know it was there. I thought it was. Yeah, um... yeah, exactly. Um, maybe it's actually, actually, if you go, if you go through yeah. the door, Sonia, 
there are some pictures about it. Yes, and, uh, I will go. What yes, I used exactly. to what I used to tell the visitors that uh, you can see that even the ancient Romans knew that this is probably the best place in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you are right. Oh, wait, you are right. Can we, can we slow I down propose a bit? something. I propose yeah. also something. We should talk uh, with uh, you know the uh, people in charge of this. But as a CMS is very very, let's say, sensitive also to arts uh, because there is the connection, I know. Maybe we could try to find uh, something uh, which is relating uh, uh, art and uh, archaeology with the physics. It would, would be not bad, okay? We should uh, propose. However, oh, coming back to the physics, where I am now, I'm in, a, in what we call a safety zone because I just, uh, I'm just out from the elevator. And as you can see, there are very heavy doors. These are fire doors. So they are protecting us in case in the experimental zone there is some smoke or, or fire. And also there is another important thing, which is the fact that here the, the air is pulled out, let's say, is overpressurized. This means that if there is any lack of gas inside or again the smoke, nothing can enter. So this is the best place in case of an evacuation. We can wait uh, just the elevator to go up or the fire brigade. Okay, now let's go immediately inside. This is, you see, this, this door. And I will show as Zoltan was uh, uh, proposing uh, here. Maybe Noemi can help me. These are pictures, I don't know if you can see, when they were digging and they found this famous Roman villa. Okay, and uh, there are also other pictures, uh, as Andres was saying, uh, where, uh, for the construction and the fact that, that we had to cool down all the waters inside the, uh, the land, uh, the earth, okay? Just uh, to put the concrete and to, to build this uh, place. Now I'm uh, in uh, at minus uh, 80. Noemi is showing you it's, we are trying to prove that we are here, and maybe you can see uh, at the end of this uh, of this pipe. I don't know how to call it. This column there is a, a, a light square, which is the surface where I was just a few minutes ago. So I use the elevator. You see on the, on your left, you see a white wall. This is the wall of the elevator. I, uh, I had to, uh, to, to use to come here. Now, what we do, we do uh, where we go in this direction where we are, we are in a cavern, which is called uh, the service cavern. Then, okay, Andres, uh, if you want to describe all the electronics, I will go just in the middle of the racks, so just showing uh, things, but you can, uh, of course, describe and I will leave you the floor. Uh, this is uh, the service cavern because uh, we have all the, the things uh, needed to, uh, to rule our, our, our detector. Uh, what does it mean? That the detector is in another cavern on the, in parallel here, the experimental cavern. Maybe, yes, uh, maybe you can see from here, Noemi is trying to show you. Uh, maybe you can follow, you see a sort of corridor and at a certain point, you see some light floor is uh, the other cabin, which is parallel from here. And uh, we have uh, some electronics uh, in on the, the detector, but then uh, you need to, to bring these signals outside and then to send these signals also on surface and to be analyzed by physicists. So these uh, complex, uh, not complicated, but complex uh, system uh, starts from the cavern, comes to the service cavern here, and then goes up. Now I will, uh, I will enter one of the rooms where we have a part of the electronics, which is called the, the level one trigger. So it's the first level of filtering, let's say, of, of, of data. And you will see there are many, I would call them closets, I don't know words, the, the name is Rex with electronics, but you will see it's really, you have to be very systematic, you have to know how to connect things, you need to map 
all cables, otherwise you are lost. If you don't believe me, I will show you in a while. Okay, here is very noisy. <coughs> if we have uh, some of our students uh, who already worked in uh, with electronics, uh, you know that okay, electronics is producing uh, uh, heat. So we need also to cool down and uh, you can uh, maybe, I don't know if you hear the noise, but for me, it's very annoying. We have all the fans working. So you see the electronics. Maybe what I can do now, I'm talking, I will go inside these corridors. Andreas, when you want to, to interrupt me, you can. I sure. would like to show, show, to show our students that, okay, I will enter. So I know this is a virtual business, but you see, in principle, nobody can enter these corridors, but I will do for you and I'm allowed to do. <laughs> so, Andres, as you want, you can uh, describe, uh, I will enjoy the aesthetic uh, of these uh, cables, so you see? Yeah. But you can uh, describe in details uh, what we have here. Yeah, so for the most part, I would say this is very cool for people who are into cable management. It's a lot of cables and what you're seeing mostly are fiber optics in particular. And these fiber optics are carrying signals from our detector and they're going into these boards. And these are what we call FPGAs that are decoding the information from the detector. And there's a very sophisticated uh, chain of what we call the DAQ that funnels all this information. And in particular, some of the systems that you can see are related to what we call the trigger. Now the trigger is essentially a filter. We are taking data, we are looking at these collisions, but we cannot record every single interaction that happens inside of the detector. You might imagine that each time there's a collision and we want to keep it, it's maybe the size of an MP3 or so. And we have 40 million of those every second. So there's too many songs. We can't listen to all these songs or, I mean, of course, analyze all this data. So we have to filter it out. And uh, yeah, a lot of the systems that you see here are dedicated to that trigger system or filtering system. But there's also many, many other uh, systems related to power supplies and other services for the uh, detectors. This in particular is the very messy Braille rack. Uh, this is the group that I work with and I always give them trouble for this. For this <laughs> Sorry, rack. I didn't want to stress this. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you it's, see? <laughs> it's very, uh, very interesting as Sonia was saying, you have to be extremely methodical when you're working with these cables. And I can tell you very specifically that some of my colleagues had to change the length of these cables because that introduces a, a bit of delay. And we're talking about nanoseconds here, uh, but they need that amount of time resolution to be able to correctly uh, measure what's going on in these collisions. So, uh, yes. Andres, if I can just interrupt you, you know, this is, uh, I was just saying methodical because, okay, this is in my, my, my personal experience as I was uh, dealing with uh, optical fibers and also the length you were saying, uh, just to arrange the right length uh, to use, not only for the delay, but also for mechanical reasons. So it's really, it's really tricky uh, to manage with cables. Uh, let me just say something and then I will leave you again the floor. Is that okay? Maybe you saw, you noticed, our students know, have noticed that we have uh, these bands, which uh, seem, in this, on the screen, that seems to be yellow, but they are oranges. However, this is uh, a signal that the, 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 there is always, uh, the, we cannot switch on uh, off uh, this, uh, these uh, devices, uh, even if uh, we are pushing uh, this button. You see, this is uh, a safety button. I'm showing you the emergency stop in case uh, there is something wrong. We can always push this button and the electronics uh, switch off, but not these electronics. This means uh, is a, a signal uh, to be to, uh, for people here not to touch these uh, these parts because. Uh, they have always uh, uh, high voltage. And then here, this is also, I like a lot of this, uh, this wall because I think this is the, uh, really RPC the essence uh, of the cables, okay? You see the methodical, etc. 
Okay, so I leave you the to, floor. Thank yeah. you. Just to add a, a little bit more information. So in particular, these high voltage cables belong to one of the muon systems. Uh, but I also wanted to just point out, uh, Sonia was saying there are these, oh, and, and by the way, yeah, you can see that uh, for this particular subsystem, Pakistan was one of the countries that is, is still heavily involved. So you will see some, uh, every now and then you'll see stickers uh, from certain universities or certain institutions, and in this case, the government of Pakistan. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to quickly mention that there's many, many services and many, we have, we have to carefully control the temperature of certain parts of the detector and there are gases that we have to provide and so on. So the safety of not just the people in the detectors uh, paramount, but also the safety of the detector itself. So when there is an emergency, we can't just shut down the power, yeah. right? We need to keep certain pumps running. And again, this is for the safety of both the detector and the people that are working there. Sonia, do you want to take over? Yes, I want just to show that, okay, I was uh, going down using these stairs, and now you see, I'm just uh, entering this corridor, you see, and this corridor is connecting the service cover I was in, and I will follow this path to go to the experimental cover, okay? So, uh, I will go in here, and uh, you see, there is another door. Now this door is yellow. I had to budge again. Uh, I will show you how to budge. Maybe I don't know. Sultan, do you want to say the colors of the doors? I like when you. When you yes, say why this. not? So, <laughs> yes, why not? So probably you remember that there was yes, a green door on the surface where Sonia went through. Just a minute ago, you probably saw a red one we didn't mention. And now this is a yellow one. The colors really do make difference. Why the green is a, is, a, is a door where you can go through without any problem. Uh, uh, in, in our case, even uh, not uh, a special permission is needed for that. We call it impact. Uh, the, instead, the uh, yellow door is a, is a protected door. If you pass through this during the beam, when it is not actually permitted, you shut down the full LHC. Uh, you might see if Noemi looks around once she will have time that we have cameras everywhere around this door. So if you would do this trick, you would need to get, uh, yeah, exactly. And also from the external <laughs> side, we have one. Uh, so, and everything is recorded there. Oh, that's my camera. That's not <laughs> part of the, the, the access system. Uh, so if, 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 if you do, like this, then of course you will need to have a good explanation. Um, apart from these, uh, uh, as part of the safety, we not just uh, declare uh, closed or access or whatever the status of the of the experimental cavern and the the, the accelerator complex, but we also require uh, a special procedure when before we start the first beam. This is called patrol. In this case, a team of, of uh, well-trained people should go around, should look everywhere in these, these premises. And also they have to confirm their presence with a, a set of key switches while well, activating key switches. Uh, and after that, we, we declare these areas uh, inhabited. Uh, if you break through these doors, of course, this uh, condition uh, is cleared. So we have to redo this. And in case of a 27 kilometer accelerator, this is not a very, very fast process. So uh, actually, everything is about safety, even the colors. Um, this is this is the 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 the, the, the premier interest of ours. Okay, sorry about. The, the long explanation, Sonia, you can go ahead. This is anyway. No, 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 of, of course, <laughs> no, but I like always. I learn always a few more details about these doors. However, okay, the, the, the summarizing uh, never break uh, the end uh, the, these doors. We didn't show <laughs> how to break through these doors. I mean the 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 pads, uh, but definitely everybody should uh, immediately realize if you are in front we of, should also of say that okay, we do not there advertise is, <laughs> there is no interest uh, entering uh, the 
experimental cavern where there are collisions. Okay, so this is also why, in, in general, nobody wants to break these doors. Now, this is uh, the door to enter the, 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 the experimental cavern. Inside is overpressurized again, so it's also heavy the door, but it's also because of the, the difference in pressure. I will do it two hands and I will enter inside. Okay, so da, da, da. if you Vienna. follow me, <laughs> we have our, our jewel, our baby, how to call it. Okay, now uh, this is CMS. Uh, at least uh, this is uh, one side of the detector. Um, maybe as uh, we go down, uh, we, I can show you different parts of the detector, but however, we are in the condition now that the detector is uh, completely closed. What I mean? I mean that, okay, you should imagine you already had some lectures, so you know that the detector is basically a sleeping uh, cylinder, okay? Sonia, sorry for yeah. so, sorry for interrupting. Uh, the detector is closed from this end, but if you go through the other end, it's partially open. So you can you can better explain can, the, the sliding show. parts. Yeah, yeah, but I want to to stress now the beam pipe is just for this. Oh yeah. So this is uh, even if it's closed in this side, uh, we can saw the beam pipe as you see. You know, I'm showing with this uh, her finger, and so this is from where particles come. So, so you should imagine this is the LHC basically. And uh, some pa particles, the beam is coming from this direction. There is the beam on the other direction and in the center of this cylinder, you get the, the, the bunch crossing and then the collisions. Okay, now let's try to go on the other side. So by the way, the place where Sonia is now is the, the so-called visitor platform. This is where we used to receive visitors. Well, when the, the COVID restrictions allow us, uh, but they cannot go any further. Can... Yes, so we they cannot. Are we... Just, they are now just out of this out. region. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, I will now go in, in the parts where you cannot go, okay? Yeah, actually, well, the, the reason is that Sonia and Noemi has all the all the access rights and permissions to, to go out from the visitor platform, and they are so kind to take the the, the camera and, with them. And also it's, uh, it should be pointed out that the, the area has been declassified. So there were- uh, this, this one is not. Okay, not yet. This one is not only the, the visitor platform. But of course there's measurements to make sure that it's safe. So that exactly, it's there exactly, so exactly. We have measurements that uh, it was the first thing we did on last Monday when we had the, the last beam in the machine. But uh, a group of, of radio protection experts went down with, uh, with uh, measurement devices and, uh, and measured the, the radiation from point to point. And they also took smear samples. So, so we have a gamma spectrometry measurement as well for the, for the radio light. Uh, and now we have all the, all the papers and, and uh, uh, verifications that uh, this zone is not harmful. Okay, so we are safe, basically. Okay. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay, folks, we have a question. <laughs> have oh, yeah, this. if you have a question, sorry, sorry, we have a question from... Yeah, we have a question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in a normal month, how many collisions can occur? How many groups have access to control tests using the accelerator? Uh, well, how many... Uh, I can answer the first question. The second question, I don't really understand, but we will figure out. Uh, so how many uh, collisions can occur in a normal month? Uh, we might have 40 million bunch crossings per second. So you can calculate, you can uh, multiply uh, with it. It's a couple of... Uh, but but it, maybe in a month, you, I would say that we want to have collisions as close to 24 seven as possible. Exactly. But in a month, we're going to, you know, a typical fill, which is the time from during which we ha are having collisions is often, on average, I would say when things are going well, 24 hours or so. Uh, but then there might be six hours of downtime or maybe three hours or maybe one hour. So we, in reality, we don't really collide. The, the Sorry. Uh, so there's a few more questions. Sonia, do you want to- Yes, uh, I, I wanted just to show something because uh, I had to go down otherwise. So maybe you can uh, 
you can take the time and then maybe when I'm done, I can also answer question. It's just to show the other part of the beam pipe. Maybe you can see I'm trying to do with my finger, you see? So we are already on the other half of the, of the cylinder and we see the beam pipe from where the other, the, the beam is coming. And the, so we, it's just in the middle that we have, I cannot show you the center, of course, but you can imagine that, okay, maybe I have some perspective from here to show you, okay? You see the detector? Now, maybe I could also say something. I, I, I will go up here on the top of the detector, and then I will go uh, fastly also down. You see, here we have the floor, the minus one other, let's say. And uh, okay, this uh, the diameter from the bottom to the top is a building of five floors. Okay, just to, uh, to give you a, a comparison, uh, because uh, if you look at the detector like that, it seems uh, okay, small. It's not small. This distance, uh, this diameter is about 15 meters, uh, so a building of five floors. Why the length uh, in uh, or as, uh, the horizontal length is about uh, a building of eight floors. Okay, so maybe I go, I go up. I will follow Noemi, and you can follow me. And we go up, and you can take the floor and this. Okay, so maybe I will uh, address some of the questions. Yes. Um, so uh, I, I will ask Sultan, uh, there's one question about how many visitors we typically got before COVID. Uh, and I, I also asked Sultan about the open days. Maybe you can say a word. Yeah, yeah. So what concerns the number of visitors before COVID, I think, as far as I remember, it was something like 30,000 yeah. a year. Of course, not all of the visitors could go through to the experimental cavern visitor platform. Because of course, if we have a data taking, if we have beam in the machine, we don't allow them to go into the experimental Do cavern. Do we want to show this? But for some reason, they, they, they well, enjoy very people. much even the, the service cavern. Uh, so we have something like 30,000. Before COVID, after, after or during COVID, it, it is just 100. And this is restricted to the protocol visits that we cannot cancel. Um, concerning the open days, uh, almost every five years we have an open day when, when a, for a weekend we open up really everything. Um, last open day was in, 19, in 19, 2019, just before the COVID broke out in September. I think it was in September. September, yeah. Um, and we got something like uh, 6,000, 6,500 uh, during the two days, Saturday and Sunday. At CMS. At CMS, only at CMS. In, in, in CERN, I think it was something like 70,000, if I'm not completely Over wrong. Over two days. Over two days. We are extremely popular. <laughs> uh, and of course, we are not, not very much used to handle such an amount of visitors. So for, for, a, for, a, for a normal museum, this is a normal number. Uh, so I think right. we might have lost them. Yeah, exactly. I, let me just uh, so, put you on the, the spotlight. And sure. then... So I'll, I'll answer a few more questions. One we can answer pretty quickly is about the energy usage of CERN, which is, I, I would just say it's comparable to the city of Geneva. Mm -hmm. So CERN itself will consume roughly... Something like 170 megawatts. Yes. Um, now there's a question about storage and I Oops. don't completely understand okay. uh, the question. Just, just a technical thing, so, uh, okay. they, they have to reboot the phone. Okay, so, so for some unknown reason, they will be out for, for two minutes, something like that. Okay, so we're trying okay, to get- Wait, the camera wait, back. hold on, hold on. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So we're, go ahead. So we're coming to the end of our actual uh, planned session and that's at 12, that's at lunch, our time. However, it seems like there's a bit more to go uh, so folks who are on the call who are, who are connected from the US, feel free to hang out, feel free to continue with the tour. If you have to leave or if you'd like to, I don't know, go get a drink of water or so, go do that. We'll, we'll, we'll be continuing. But you are technically dismissed. If you want to hang around, please do so. All right, please continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we'll be happy to answer. At least I can stick around and answer more <laughs> questions. Uh, but I think we got Noemi back. I don't know if. Uh, no, not, uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, so there was a question about storage, and I, I'm not sure that I 
fully understand the question. But can you hear us now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry. We were enjoying uh, <laughs> here. We don't know what happened. We lost the connection. Uh, can I just show this as, uh, so I go down later? Uh, so we are, you see, on the top of the cavern. Uh, maybe I will go so then maybe I can show here. You see, this is the shaft from where we, we lower the detector. Um, I know there are some pictures and so maybe it's much easier to show all the slices, I would say, of the detector. So what are called the wheels of the detectors. Because uh, CMS, I don't know if it was said uh, during the, 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 the interruption, the, the CMS was uh, built, uh, uh, assembled uh, totally on surface. So there. And then we had to lower wheels by wheels uh, to rebuild the detector here, because these those wheels, uh, they are uh, all independent. So you we can do, and I can show you a few of them here. Maybe you can adjust the follow, you see the stairs here, which are on the wheels. Unfortunately, I cannot go, I cannot go uh, really on the top. I cannot work today on the top, but however, this is a little bit what you could see if I would have been allowed to go there. Okay. Uh, here yeah? I would, just to answer one question, the color coding of the stairs, uh doesn't mean anything it is just green because, because these it's, are the it's nice because it's nice <laughs> just because it's nice yes exactly okay, <laughs> okay. uh as uh andres before i was uh, stressing uh, for example some parts of the electronics from pakistan i don't know if you can see the, this is not because i'm italian it's just uh, to say that there are uh, some other things uh, for example coming the, here it's written italy but maybe you cannot see but well, just to say that this is a, a big collaboration with many parts uh, coming from uh, all the institutions participating to the collaboration. And then you see from here, the floor, okay? So in few minutes, I will go here down to show you the, 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 the picture, the perspective of this detector from uh, the, the, the lowest part, the lowest floor, even if we have some electronics also below the detector, however, you will see the, what we, we call the fits. What are the fits, the pads, okay? Are these structures and they are very important, okay? Maybe I can show you, you see this structure with my finger because it's uh, thanks to these pads that we can really close and open the wheels uh, so we can close and open the detector as an accordion if you want i stress again i don't know if it's uh, you can see this uh, the beam pipe we saw before from the other level the beam pipe from where one the particles are coming to collide in the middle of the detector so i go down now you can follow me and uh, please take the floor. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I think we should answer. We have some nice, really nice questions concerning the data mm -hmm. storage. Yes. Uh, so as far as I know, after the, the high level trigger, if we are running, we have something like uh, 400 megabytes per second. For CMS. For yes. CMS only. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this we stream up. To the tier zero of the uh, um, so the, the, of the data storage, right? So the tier zero is a facility here at CERN. Yeah, but and this is in Meron. It's in Meron, right? So it's not here in CMS. It's uh, about twenty minutes away, in the in the main CERN site, and there actually like a copy of the data is made and it's stored in magnetic tapes. And I know that sounds very old school, like magnetic tapes, but it's a very cost-effective way to keep the data for you know, long-term storage. And also, sorry for interrupting, 
the tape is a sequential access device. So it, it's like the book that you read from the, the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. uh, like our, exactly, our events, as mm -hmm. we call the, the physics events or the collisions, are independent from each other. So they don't know what the previous event was. Uh, so if we want to make a, a physics analysis, we have to investigate each one, one by one. So that's why the, the data storage uh, of the sequ sequential data storage of, the, of the, the, the tapes is absolutely perfect for us. So it is, even though we, we copy out for technical reasons, the data from the, the storage to, to this, but, but so, definitely we need a sequential access. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if, uh, if, I guess I wanted to also stress that uh, this, uh, this data flow is actually very interesting and um, a large part of the data ends up being distributed. And I don't know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know Alex uh, might know a bit of detail and he's based at Fermi. Maybe you want to say a quick word? Sure. Um, so at, uh, um, for all of the LHC experiments, we're really concerned with um, one, getting the data to all of the researchers which are, who are spread around the world uh, to data redundancy. I mean, we spend lots and lots of money and lots of time in order to acquire this data. And so we want to make sure that no freak accident will, you know, delete it accidentally. Um, and uh, then data preservation, can we access it for a long period of time? Um, so researchers are going to be looking at this for decades. Uh, and so we have a tiered computing system where, uh, as Andres already said, there's a tier zero, which is a massive computing center at CERN, which stores a copy of all of the raw data. So everything collected from all the LHC experiments gets stored there. Um, and then uh, we have our next tier, the tier ones, and there are, for CMS, there are seven of those, I believe. Maybe it's gone up since I last checked. Um, Fermilab has one of those tier ones. So Fermilab is an incredibly important compute part of the computing system for CMS. And it stores a copy of all of the data collected by CMS. Uh, it's also responsible for holding a lot of the simulation that is produced by CMS. And then we have our smaller tier twos and tier threes. The tier twos um, are mainly for compute. Um, they do a lot of storage, but they also do a lot of the computation. Um, so you have to think about not just storage, but also how many CPUs, how many GPUs are available for researchers to use. And the tier threes are more of your university level systems. So I will say that Fermilab has one of the largest tier threes in CMS as well. Um, so there are so many levels of computation. CERN itself has numerous computing centers. Um, so they, you know, even though I'm based at Fermilab and I have a, a university that I'm associated with, I still use certain computing resources. So researchers are very dependent on what we call this worldwide LHC computing grid. That's what we term this whole interconnected system. Great, thank you so much, yeah, Alex. Maybe you. we can uh, pass it on to Sonia. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. And now, uh, as you see, I'm now to the ground floor uh, here. So I was just showing the picture of the detector. And now I will go there to show you uh, how big it is. I was just pointing the pads. So you see there are four. And then going up, I will just show you the distance between the wheels, okay, here, and the, 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 the barrier here, because it's exactly the, the, the distance that there was between the walls of the shaft when we lowered the, uh, the, um, the wheels, okay? Uh, let me say something. Uh, I, I was talking about the fact that we can open this detector as an accordion. How do we do? Okay, this is uh, thanks to the parts and uh, thanks to this system, okay? So there are uh, cables, of course, you can see now, okay, these are not used. You see these uh, thick cables, okay? And this uh, machine, which is uh, pulling the detector when the cables, they are connected, is pulling uh, the wheels. So uh, if you inject 
in these uh, pods compressed air and i will show you the system you see we inject compressed air in these pods uh, so the, the let's say the wheel uh, is a, a little bit light lighter let's say consider that this uh, each wheel is about uh, 2000 tons uh, and this way you can pull and open the detector now to show you how big is uh, this thing i will go close to the detector maybe noemi can show me you can show my picture you see i'm okay one meter and 60 more or less so you can see it's also my sights okay and maybe we can show i don't know if from this side noemi can we use uh, our very expensive detector here okay so we have this a very expensive detector we will show is this one you see and noemi is also and we will try to do an experiment okay let's see ah yes it's really nice you see so what happens uh, uh we have the magnet inside but of course now it's not uh, it's switched off but however this part is iron as a residual ma magnetization and this is why the pins they stay and okay this is uh, something uh, we like to do is for fun but okay you can say but this is not a measurement so, okay i will say yes and no because you cannot get any number with this system, but at least you can understand how uh, intense, how strong is the field. It happened to me, not inside, of course, but outside, because you see these pins, they stay here because, okay, they are also reacting to the gravitational force. So we could try to enjoy to attach all the pins here. I have also others and, and see when, which is the maximum number of pins you can attach here. And so in this way, you could calibrate, you see? Now, I don't want to, I think it will be very strong now because, uh, okay, we had the, 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 the field uh, was just uh, last week. Yeah, so this I is think spectacular. The yes, exactly, field, you see. Now it, is, it seems to be a bit stronger than, than uh, before the magnet test we had. Yes, exactly. Uh, actually, what I just wanted to, to comment on this, if Noemi shows the top of this, uh, this place, uh, it's a nice flat place, exactly in a convenient height where people would put on their computers when, uh, when working. Ah, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, and uh, due to the remnant field, however, my, my, my screen shuts down. So that's an unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've had to so tap in okay, from the I service could, cavern. I, oh yeah. I could oh, continue, yeah. however. I could continue like that. Okay, I want to stop myself, however. So you see, so, this is a residual magnetization we have uh, here, and we could continue. I, I think we. It would be interesting to say a few more things about the magnet. I know we we said you know yes. the CMS magnet. Uh, well, it's <laughs> so an integral funny. part of the detector and it's uh you know the compact muon solenoid so the solenoid refers to this magnet it's a superconducting magnet and we basically cool it down to cryogenic i'm afraid we lost sonia oh <laughs> yes i think she's uh very very entertained uh, <laughs> i'm enjoying uh, i know you are talking about the serious things but this is physics sorry this is <laughs> physics look 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 yeah they're dancing it's great um, <laughs> you see <laughs> This is physics. <laughs> yeah. So serious scientists yeah. have fun too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so this magnet uh, produces about 3.8 Tesla, which is more than 100,000 times <laughs> stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. But it only does that That's when sharing. we go down to cryogenic temperatures and we uh, pump 18,000 appears of current into it. So that's the way we can generate this amount of magnetic field. And the Do fact we that we have such a strong magnetic stone? field is what makes CMS a unique detector where uh, it's compact in the sense that we can keep the detector dimensions relatively small compared to Atlas because we have such a strong magnetic field that charged particles bend relatively quickly, right? They, they have a larger bend radius. And this uh, is what allows us to keep most of our detector is, is within that magnet volume, which is uh, almost 20 meters or a bit less than 20 meters in inner diameter. But that contains all our tracking and calorimetry. 
and then all of this basically everything outside of the magnet most of it is dedicated to the nuance systems uh sonia do you have any more comments here you can see uh, one of the yes because videos. we are almost at the end uh, of our visit in the cavern so just to show you uh what uh, is the picture from from the ground of the same opening we have seen before from the middle level you see again the beam pipe you see the two wheels and then uh, okay uh i would like uh, we are going out from here uh i don't have any uh, any just, just one more comment before you move yeah. uh the reason why we opened the detector up again because it was closed for the the magnet test is that in this region oh yeah exactly in that red zone in the middle of the screen we are going to install one chamber probably in that direction 16 um so behind the 32 uh we are going to install a, a new gem chamber uh also american institutes are involved in the, the development of this this detector uh this will be the demonstrator of the so-called ge21 the new generation of the the gem chambers that we are going to install in two years in yeah. that red region they will right. cover so you, the red you can region. see where those go so maybe i can say a very quick word we actually have four different uh muon systems that they use slightly different technologies they're all gaseous detectors that means that there's a gas inside of these chambers and when a muon goes through it ionizes the gases and then we can take measurements in different ways but the gems is the most recent uh technology that we've uh, implemented and as Sultan said, this is a sort of demonstrator for a future nuance system. We need to do this before we start to, to build the other 71 chambers. Exactly. Uh, we, we need to know what is to be modified, uh, what are the, the urgent questions to be solved, etc. on these, these chambers. And this is the best place, even though we already had a, a radiation test, a magnet test. Yeah. But this is a real this situation real test. And, yeah. and that we need. So similarly, there, there's been uh, quite a bit of work going on during these three years uh, of break that we just had, uh, this long shutdown too. So we've shown you the beam pipe, and I don't know if we mentioned that it's a brand new beam pipe that we've installed. It's a smaller diameter beam pipe that allows us to, in a number of years, uh, we'll, we'll install a next generation pixel detector, which is a silicon-based detector that's in the innermost, innermost part of, our, uh, of the CMS detector. Um, and there's many other activities that are that have been happening, but I'll also mention that we just uh, uh, in the past week or two weeks ago, we had what we call pilot beams, uh, or these are sort of test collisions uh, at lower energies. So we have these we had these collisions, and it was actually the first time that this new gem system for saw its first collisions. Um, so Sonia, should do you want to? I think you're pointing something out. Do you want to take yes, over? Yes, I'm pointing something out, but I didn't want to interrupt you because you were uh, describing the test. However, as you gave me the floor, uh, just to say, OK, now I, I had to go out from the cavern, but I wanted to point it out. So this is uh, the distance I was talking about uh, when uh, uh, the distance left from the wall of the shaft and the wheels. So now, Believe me, this distance is as large as my hand, okay? It's not more. It's about 10 centimeter or a little bit more than 10 centimeter. So you should imagine that, okay, each wheel was lowered for uh, about um, 100 meters with uh, leaving, leaving only 10 centimeter from both sides. This is quite challenging. This is why uh, it took uh, uh, eight hours for the the lightest wheels so as this one the was i was talking about uh, the 2000 uh, uh, tons uh, while for the central part where the, there is uh, the, the the magnet we cannot see now it took 12 hours uh, okay you can calculate you are uh, you are good to calculate uh, the, the the velocity okay of this uh, lowering uh, which is uh, it was done using uh, cranes uh, coming from uh, this time, yes, from uh, Italy, uh, from uh, the Genoa uh, Arbor, because of the typical cranes you use for uh, uh, harbor in the harbors. So they are very powerful cranes. 
um, now just let me also add also one comment. You were talking about the test. Yes, this is crucial. I would like to have you add also some from me. Uh, you need uh, not only to test in labs uh, all the things, but you also need uh, to test many times and if you can also directly in the experimental area, because uh, then you have to do the replicas and you don't want to be wrong at the very end uh, to, to get uh, uh, devices uh, uh, that are not, uh, are not uh, good. Uh, from my experience, as I told you, at a certain point, I moved to the astroparticle is even uh, worst because uh, you have to find not only with the radiation which is uh, typical from the zone not only for the mechanical constraint that you have to fight with uh, but also for example for the other condition as the vacuum or the fact that in any case as you see here we can stop lhc we can open the detector we can go with our screwdriver and uh, change of course we need time is challenging but we can do when you are in space this is uh, tricky uh, the first time this was done reparation was in the hubble it was uh, uh, there were some intervention and the last time at, at least to my knowledge was in january 2020 uh, for the on the space station or for the ams uh, replacement of the cooling system the pumps of the cooling system so, so does it mean that that, uh, that the the astronauts on the iss can just jump in their spacesuit and uh, walk out uh, through yes, to the, exactly. to the... So yes, the, exactly. the, let me let me very quickly mention that I just started watching there's there's a new documentary uh, on Disney plus or something exactly about this process that Sonia is describing so if you haven't seen it I highly recommend it it's about like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, exactly. the placement of the cooling I was uh, uh, last week uh, there was a uh, there was a conference uh, uh, let's say the one of the astronauts uh, who did the uh, who did the, this job uh, was just talking about uh, the fact that when you are in the in the spacesuit, uh, they are pressurized. And so each movement you do, for example, to to take uh, a screwdriver or whatever, you have to contrast contrast uh, contrast the, the the pressure. So this means is as if you are really doing uh, the, this yeah. very this movement. Uh, uh, for six hours or seven hours because oh. each EVA is six or seven hours. So, so it's quite answer, tricky. To answer the question, I think the documentary is called Among the Stars. And uh, as Sonia mentioned, well, I, I don't know if you mentioned it, but one of the main astronauts, do, astronauts doing the work was an Italian astronaut. Yes, Luca, Luca Parmitano, Luca Parmitano yes. yes. And ah. another from US, yes. uh, um, uh, Andrew, Smog, um, Andrew Morgan. Morgan. Mm -hmm. yes. So actually, what, what, uh, I just just used the phrase "jump into the spacesuit." I I heard about it uh, uh, just a couple of days ago. I think from the French astronaut. Uh, he just described that uh, he loved loves this very much from the the science fictions because <laughs> uh, they just handle it as as taking on a coat. Uh, but indeed, it takes several hours yeah. uh, while they can go through the the lock to the space. Yes, exactly. But okay, there are you can you can see there are either from uh, from NASA or also from uh, from uh, the European Space Agency. You can find the all coverage of their EVA because there is another thing. Usually, commonly we say the space walks. You know, oh, yeah. they do not like it at all. The space walks. Yeah, exactly. It's extravehicular activity. <laughs> it's not yeah. a walk. It's not a walk. <laughs> so, so if you Let's say if you tell to a space an astronaut a space walk, uh, they will call, uh, they will con uh, be as upset. Let's say yeah. you have to say extravehicular activity, so EVA. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we got some questions in the meantime. Yeah. Well, actually, can I? Uh, I know Alex that you already addressed this question, but I also wanted to say a word about. There was a question about whether we need to shield electronics, and Alex mentioned that we need radiation tolerant electronics, but. I'll I'll take I, I kind of already mentioned that in a few years we're gonna we plan to install a new generation pixel detector, and this is the innermost part of the detector. So we need to design these systems to be radiation tolerant, but they still degrade when they're exposed to these beams. So the uh, the silicon detectors that we used need to be cooled down to slow down that process of deterioration, but eventually they re they reach their end of life. So 
we are already on our second generation pixel detector and we're already in the, uh, let's say, uh, in the middle of, uh, let's say, producing, commissioning, uh, you know, the, the next generation pixel detector. So that's part of uh, the lifetime of the detector, right? There's many systems and you have to always think about the future. So that's one of the things that uh, that is important to point out, I think, is that we just had this three year break and we were upgrading the detector and the LHC itself, but uh, we're also looking forward to the high luminosity LHC. So we're gonna have uh, collisions starting in 2022 for a couple of years. And then we're gonna have another shutdown where we're really gonna go crazy and replace so many things in the detector. And the LHC is going to increase the rate of collisions uh, by almost a factor of 10. So it's, it's, so it's gonna be very exciting. I just wanted to also point out the future upgrades. Um, so we have a couple of more questions. Uh, and uh, Sultan, you, I think you wanted to- Yes, sir. Can I simply say something about this uh, poster and then I will come back to the control room? Can you hear me? Because I lost a yep. certain form of- Yeah, we can, yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's just uh, to show to our guest uh, this nice poster, uh, which is, of course, so you can read the CMS compact immune solenoid. Uh, now, just one thing, in particular to girls, okay? Uh, you see in the black background, uh, there are all the pictures from the male component of uh, CMS, at least those who decide who accepted to to take a picture and then in white we have the female components uh you see this is a, a certain difference so please <laughs> please but fortunately come. fortunately this is biased towards to the letters uh the number of of uh, of uh, ladies and and gentlemen's in in the cms collaboration is not so much biased <laughs> okay no, and this no, is no, very very okay. important that that we are close no, to the 50 50 <laughs> and not like the the aerial ratio of the letters but, and the backgrounds no, but my message my message is uh, not from cms in the uh, at cern in general we do not have this bias the problem is that uh, this bias is coming from uh, before. It's not at the level even of the bachelor, it's really high school. High school because when uh, some uh, students, they had to choose to go to physics or something related to physics, maybe they think about twice. There is a big, uh, let's say, responsibility also from the, from the teacher's point of view. Uh, I guess it was uh, named before about the quark net uh, uh, network and the master classes uh, okay and uh, i know they are trying really to spread uh, this message too among uh, all the high school uh, in us and not only us so this is very important there is no job for male people <laughs> let's say men and no job for women everybody can try and we really hope to have this uh, to reach naturally this 50 percent as uh, Sultan was saying I'm coming to the control room now okay thank you so there's a couple of more questions um I, I there's one about whether there are any other gaps within the collider aside from the detector uh which I'm not sure if if I'm interpreting the question correctly but uh there are in the CMS or sorry in, in the LHC tunnel we have the protons going in one direction they go inside of one beam pipe and then there's a second beam pipe so the protons are in separate beam pipes as they travel along and however of course we merge them into a single beam pipe at these interaction points but there are other facilities around the LHC tunnel two that I find very interesting are the RF system which accelerate these protons and then we have the beam dump so uh, whenever we need to get rid of the beam we activate what we call these these kicker magnets and they activate and then they uh, get rid of the beam into a fixed target area let's say um hopefully that sort of answers the question and uh, i see another question about uh how like what is the communication like between different parts of the lhc i guess that means the 
operators and the experiments themselves. So I'd say that this that there we do need very close communication with the LHC operators. And that takes the form of many different aspects, but part of it is uh, all of the experiments need to provide information associated with, uh, with what kind of conditions are happening here at CMS, right? If we have collisions, what is sort of the rate of collisions? What is the, uh, the rate of what we call the beam background and things like that. Um, but within experiments, I would say we don't communicate with, let's say, Atlas very often, <laughs> not directly. Nope. Not uh, directly. Yes, we, <laughs> there is a lot of communication, but That's not, not needed. Can I the provoke operation? Right. you? So I would say for <laughs> operations, it's not really needed. But there is, mm -hmm. of course, communication in terms of, um, in terms of the analyses. Uh, there's a bit of communication, but we also try to keep the analysis and and most of the work that we do we try to keep it independent from what atlas is doing uh and that's a very very much on purpose because it's very much uh uh let's say necessary to keep things independent and when we say we have this result and atlas has a consistent result we can really say that uh that it is independent right we reach the same conclusion independently so, which is the purpose of the cross check? Uh, otherwise, there would have been no mean to have uh, another <laughs> another detector. But maybe okay about the luminosity delivered uh, from uh, CM uh, from the LHC. Sometimes <laughs> Atlas and CMS uh, can uh, cross check them. So, so yeah. actually, actually, we <laughs> by definition we should get the same luminosity. Exactly. That's why we are on the opposite ends of the, the diameter of the of the LHC. Obviously, this is a, a, a real system, so not mathematical system. Uh, we have slight differences. Also in the measurements, we have slight differences. We might have slight different errors. Uh, but of course, if we see big differences, we have to discuss why we have that. But uh, as Andres told, in, in the analysis, we try to be absolutely uh, independent from each other. This is a very simple thing. It's a very simple, I would say, psychological thing that if my 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 fellow colleague sees something, something new, I tend to see the same if I know about it. Um, this is obviously would bias the, yes. the results. So this could part. be also a problem when you have a for example, the husband are working in CMS and the wife are working in Atlas. But however, they are professional. I don't know how they manage it. I, I know a couple of couples. Yes, I uh, know. Also. I don't know how they manage it. I think they do know. They simply decide not to talk about physics at home. Uh, I don't know how can it be done. My at least uh, I'm uh, you know I'm not CMS belonging well, to, so. to Atlas. But <laughs> however, okay, we decided not to talk about physics at home because okay, when you spend the whole day talking about physics, even if we enjoy, I should say, can be tough, but we enjoy. Uh, at the very moment that you want to relax, to think something else. So usually you don't, you don't talk, maybe you talk about your colleague who said something uh, strange, or maybe you didn't uh, <laughs> like uh, too much, but you don't talk about, uh, in particular, if you know you are professional, let's say this is uh, mostly I think also because as uh, Anders and Sultan, they say very well, we want to have this independence. This is really crucial. Yeah. And so we had to keep this really safe. Otherwise, uh, okay, there is no way to have two detectors uh, checking the same. So there's a question, yeah. Sultan, about maybe- Yeah, so, actually, so I think uh, this is the last mm -hmm. question. We are 30 minutes over what we typically do. Oh, um, sorry about it. Oh, no, it's okay. We appreciate it. Actually, actually, there was uh, this was the the opening picture, and there was a question concerning where we were today. We we were here in France, or we are here indeed. Yes, for the, we are still here. For the next half an hour, I still have to be here for technical <laughs> reasons. Uh, so this is the place where where we are, the the compact now solenoid experimental uh, area uh, in France, right. Uh, do and you this have is the image famous of the underground area. Oh, yeah. uh, sorry, Brian, Pardon? Please, uh, there was an image of the underground areas, sort of a side yeah, view. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me just show that. 
so was, uh, the one so here. This is this is another view of the yeah. of the same same uh, Geneva Basin, and we were or or Sonia were because we, I was there. we were sitting up here <laughs> on the surface. Sonia and Noemi went down to the underground zone. Let me show the map of the underground area. So they went down here at the so-called PM54 shaft. Actually, this is not very, not very cryptic because that's uh, the, the French uh, shaft, Puy, Puy machine, or machine uh, 54, uh, which means that, uh, that this is 0.5, and this is a little bit to the 0.4 from the collision point. <laughs> and that's why so that's, this that's is PX, uh, pre-experimental Sankansis. Yeah, uh, this is the, the experimental cavern where Sonia and Noemi walked around and made so, so nice pictures. This is the, the, the service cavern that they went down. This, yeah. They went in, in exactly. through this chicane yeah. and exited through this chicane. On the other so side. So maybe we can mention something about, about the pillar. Oh, yeah, yeah. In between. So, so uh, as Andres already told, that the the detector has to be stable on sitting in the rocks, actually in the rocks. Uh, what we have is a, is a molas and, uh, and limestone here. Uh, this structure, stone structure, wouldn't stand two big holes next to each other. So what we had to do, we had to build a seven meter thick, this is the seven meter thick pilier, or pillar in between them to, to keep, to hold the, the, the weight of the, the surrounding rocks. Uh, it's this seven is meters, seven clear meters steel thick, and, thick. and concrete. Yeah, reinforced concrete. Uh, indeed, this is, I think, a little bit different concrete because that also makes a nice of a shielding, radiation shielding. And that makes us, uh, that puts us in a very uh, special situation all around in the LHC that the service cavern can be visited even if there is beam in the machine and the experimental cavern is off limits. Which is the only experiment. This is this. the only experiment yeah. among the full one. Yeah. So, so that's that's why it is so And special. there's also something also that uh, the, the, what I was doing uh, with this uh, very expensive detector, mm -hmm. we, we can go do also outside. Uh, if the uh, magnet is running, yeah. you can do the same experiment Outside on the other, the other side, yeah. other side yeah. of the pillar, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, so. uh, within the detector cavern, we do the same trick with, with wrenches. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's really spectacular, <laughs> but unfortunately, we don't have it every week. Um, we don't really do that often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, the, the wrench operator has to be very, very trained. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, once once the field starts to, to, to torture, Yeah it in your hand, you might get scared and you let it fly. But that's one of the many considerations that we have to take into account is that even when we bring in tools into the cavern, we try to make sure that they're non-magnetic. And when we build the detector, we have to keep track of, is this screw non-magnetic? You know, so yeah. there's many, many details like that that we do have to take into account. And also the, also the radiation hardness and also the, the thing that how these things are getting activated. Mm -hmm. So yes, if exactly. you are talking about screws, we always have to find those type of steel that is not activating so much because we don't want to create radioactive waste. Yeah, of course, at this I can confirm a this happens uh, in any in any kind exactly. of experiment. Exactly. Exactly. So we the moment you have a magnetic field, you have also to take care about this uh, just to be sure. And sometimes uh, you need also to glue these screws in case you want really to be sure that do not move for any reason. So you screw the, the, the uh, you, you, you really tight the screws. So you, you measure also how the, the torque you use mm -hmm. to tighten the, the, the screws. And then maybe you put also a drop of glue. Just a difference. Or, just or, or, a, or, a, or a nail paint, you know, that's what we do in electronics. That we okay in AMS we didn't use this because it was not space qualified. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we yeah, had to outgas the glue because there could be some uh, drops of, of air, so you know some bubble of air. So we, we we didn't use. Okay, and also because I'm not using, I couldn't bring in the in the clean room just to do this. 
Okay, so so I think I think we're gonna call the day. Let's everybody give everybody in the control room a hand. Thank you for the very thorough tour. Yeah, thank you very much. This was great. Yeah, this was pretty good. I, I think this will probably be the last year we get to do this, huh? You guys won't be open next year. Will Hope you? to see those students uh, as uh, COVID time it will be better. Come here, visit mm -hmm. us really to have this experience. Uh, there are many programs also for students, uh, summer students, but not only also high school uh, student program. Uh, there is the BIM for, uh, for a line for schools uh, where they can apply for an experiment and they can also, can also be selected and come for two weeks uh, of BIM here at CERN. So there are many things uh, to do. So we hope mm -hmm. they enjoy that they can come uh, soon here. Yep. All right, everybody. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all that. We will close this session official or unofficially. I'll see everybody next week. <laughs> okay. Ciao, ciao. Bye.